All right, so what do we got here today? Well, got a couple of uh, Nagura out. Got a nice uh, Majiro. Got a Coma. And then I have my uh, Tom. And then uh, right here, we got this super, super hard Alistado. I'm really sure if this is Nakayama or Zuko or whatever, it's something. It's um, kind of ugly. It's got some splotching going on. Uh, the, the back isn't too spectacular. Uh, it's got a nice cut. See, it's in my hand, like, kind of nice if I'm hand holding. And especially like this way, because this cut goes right into my uh, heel of my thumb there, my hand. Just really nice. But uh, for this video, gonna do uh, right on the bench <clears throat> now and this other video out with uh, doing full progression and uh, I wanted to put this out there too because full progression is a nice thing gives a good look um, but in reality most of the time we're honing like we don't even need Botan you know a lot of people don't have coma, so they don't use coma. I use coma, so I'm going to do this video with coma. But um, you know, for the most part, um, coma is a, kind of a luxurious item that it's not that common, and uh, you won't see it in everybody's kit. Anyway, I want to take all day because this video is really more about like what's it really like? What's it really like to hone on JNS? Uh, you know, the other video, the full length thing, um, that's real, that happens, that goes on, but, um, usually, you know, like I said, usually you don't have to go down a boat, and it's not necessary, it's like the, probably the least used Nagura in my kits, um, all right, so I have this nice, uh, heavy grind here, love this blade, it's awesome. It's taking a little bit of a beating. You can see it's got some spine wear on it. It's been through like a bazillion honings with me. Uh, it came in with wear, you know, and it's got some weirdness in the grind. So, you know, I had to kind of work that out. Anyway, so anyway, this razor needed a honing, not a touch up. And touch ups exist, by the way. Um, recently, I came across a video where straight razor honing uh, once again has been intellectualized beyond repair well maybe not beyond repair but um, you know, everyone wants to put their fingerprint on uh, what is actually a very simple task you rubbing steel on a rock okay that's it so you know i got these emails oh what do you think about this thing without you know bevel setting yeah there we set bevels okay um denying the fact that we set bevels is ridiculous denying the fact that we do touch-ups is ridiculous uh, trying to change the terminology that's used in common speak yeah whatever okay uh arose by any other name if you read old literature manufacturers will talk about sending your uh, razor in once a year for uh, what they call grinding that was bevel setting it needed to be done then and it needs to be done now now you have 45 razors you probably don't have to send your razor in every year to get the bevel set or do it yourself um, if you beat up on the edge you may need to do it if you use a pasted strop you may have rounded it and you want to reset it the only reason I'm bringing that up is because I'm not doing a bevel set here. Okay, the bevel on this is good, but it still needed to be honed. Oh, you want to call it sharpening? Well, call it whatever you want. Okay, I've yet to find a clear definition that explains the difference between honing and sharpening. It's all the same to me. We say honing, hone razors, whatever, sharpen knives. For some reason, people don't say they hone knives. I just kind of go with the flow, 
I, I'm not looking to, uh, I don't know, promote myself and my honing skills. I just uh, speak the truth and base my opinions on my experiences. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is more than a touch-up. Um, I, I come down to Majiro. Now, I might, for a touch-up, go to Majiro. But the honing action will be a little different. Be a little less pressure. I have some decent pressure here. And put a decent amount of slurry up there or a touch up. I might use a hair less or not. I might push some off the stone. You know, but uh, anyway, so um, you don't have to do a bevel set. You don't need to go to the 1K. If you don't have to do any heavy lifting and wave stock removal, you don't need the 1K. You probably don't need bow 10. Why didn't I start with Tenju? Well, because I felt like starting with Majiro. It's just one of those things. You know, there's no rules. There's no, you know, formula. If you're looking for a recipe, you're watching the wrong guy's video. Um... I don't believe in formulaic approaches to honing. The uh, I believe in letting the steel and the stone talk to me through my hands. We call it feedback. I gauge what I have to do and what I am doing based on you know that vibration I'm picking up on. Anyway, so. So why might I need to do a bevel set other than, you know, the reasons I cited? Well, you know, stropping will put wear on it. The edge will wear. You know, people tend to think erroneously, you know. Um, it's what happens when you use your brain too much in one area. You tend to forget, like, the, the simple things. The edge doesn't wear exactly the same here as it does there. Okay, so what happens is, is in, uh, in the sense of microns or maybe more, bunches of microns, the distance from here to here changes along the length, okay? Now, yeah, sometimes you can just pull that ball back into alignment with a simple quick uh, honing with that we would call, you know, a touch-up. And sometimes... Depending on the steel, depending on the shaver, depending on a million other freaking variables that we don't know. That dimension may just be too far out for it to make sense. Make sense. It's not a matter of possible or not. It's a matter of whether or not it makes sense to take the approach. It might not make sense to try and do it on like, you know, a 12K or just home on a girl. <clears throat> so, you know. If you're out there in YouTube land and, uh, oh my God, I use that phrase. Sorry, scratch that. If you're out there in the world of wet shaving and honing, um, I would say the best thing you can do is apply common sense, not get caught up in intellectual drama, you know, Take it for what it is. You're rubbing steel on a rock. The rock is abrasive. The steel is softer than particles in the stone. The stone abrades the steel, and eventually you take the faces of the bevel. We call it a bevel, and we call it setting a bevel because we're positioning those faces at an optimum angle. You know, setting. You know, it's... I don't want to get into it. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> That's what we call it. You don't want to call it that? You, what do you want to call it? You want to call kicking a football? Fine. Okay, so yesterday I kicked a football on this Wade and Butcher, and uh, no. I'm going to call it bevel setting. I'm going to say I set the bevel. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm chewing my edge a little tiny bit. It was a little bit out. You can see it on the scope. This one I put on the scope. Just to take a look. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm just about done here. Alright, so. Yeah, crap, was my paper towels. Anyway. 
sometimes I wish I did script my videos. Um, I literally decided to like shoot this uh, clip when I decided that I was going to like hone this razor and I had no idea what I was going to say or do actually. I just do what I normally do, grab stuff, throw the camera on its little stand over here and uh, go for it. In case you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm not like doing something evil, I'm just washing the stone off. Um, somebody once said, oh, well, when you edit your video, we don't know what's going on there. Like, oh, please, man, you know, I'm honing a razor here, you know, I, I, I have no investment, like, past that in any of this. It's, there's a coma, by the way. Um, You know, if you're, you're watching the stuff I post and you think I'm, like, pulling shenanigans or whatever, or whatever that guy was inferring. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think you're taking yourself and all of this too seriously. That's what I think. Um, again, you're rubbing steel on a rock. Okay? If you want to pretend you're doing something else, splitting atoms, <clears throat> reinventing the wheel, fine, whatever. At the end of the day, all you're doing is rubbing steel on a rock. So anyway, so now I got this coma. Um, these are actually uh, my go-to stones. And like this coma is just ridiculous. And by ridiculous, I mean... <laughs> If you could feel what my hand feels right now, it's like, it's like the finest, silkiest satin ever, okay, with a little bit of like, that melted, melting chocolate kind of, I don't know how to explain it, more than that, it's just, it's sublime, man. It's almost like there's some kind of like, really badass grease on my stone, um, but not badass in like, you know, it's never going to come out. I'm talking about, you know, the kind of like, if you use that white lithium grease and like you put it on something, it, it almost like seems to like fix everything, you know, kind of like that. Um, anyway, so I got a little bit of a pasty thing going on here, and I had a little more water because it's getting too thick. Now, I'm honing, and I'm talking to you about feeling, so besides like the gorgeous sensation of the slurry under the blade here, I'm also picking up vibrations of the steel on the stone, and that's the feedback that we're really most concerned with, and there was a major shift right after I started here. And like this, this comer is ridiculously fast. If like you know, if it was a car, it would be a Lamborghini or something, um, or one of those Formula race cars. And it just goes in there, and it just takes down all those striations from the Majiro. It just like annihilates them. And then what I like to do is after that's done, I continue to go <clears throat> because. If I, if I take a visual on it, it's going to look like I've, I'm done, all right? It's going to say, oh, well, you got that beautiful haze. It's perfect. Well, it's not perfect. you got to go a little bit further, okay? Um, I don't know how to explain, but it's like when your eye, your eye can only resolve but so much. It, it can see, like, almost anything if there's enough reflection, but it's, resolution is another story. Um... If you get to the point where your eye, for the first time, perceives that the striations are gone, you can bet that there are striations that you can't see and they need to be gone too. Now, people talk about removing all the scratches and that's a nice ideal and I say it too because that's kind of the goal, but the reality is, is nothing's that perfect, especially with natural stones and there's oh always going to be a variety of particle sizes and like let's say this is a 12k stone right there are going to be particles that would register like say for example 8k 
and then would be others that register like you know 20k all right so you kind of got to get in there and do maybe you know a little bit more work than a formulaic way of thinking might have you do so oh, what about homeware now nah, i don't give a shit about homeware i really don't if I'm worried about homeware, let me rephrase that. Sometimes I am because I have a fancy place. But in general, like on this, I had no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like I used to have this boker uh, celebrated big 15th, 16th thing with, had this etched spine. With, I think it had gold wash. Yeah, I taped it because I didn't want to kill it because I was pretty sure I wasn't going to keep it. And I knew no one would want to buy it. If it wasn't pristine. So I taped that and I suffered with that extra angle, that degree of angle, but it was engineered pretty well, so it really didn't affect anything. It's just the numbers came at that point. Um, okay, I've just gone through another change, and what I have right now is like I don't feel any abrasion, um, I just feel the blade going across this polished rock and I tell you right now we're done on this but I'm going to do a little bit more you see me doing these little rat tail strokes it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean I'm a great honer it doesn't mean it's my signature stroke it's I don't know it's just something I do All right. I do have a warp in the blade. There is a bit of roll. I'm not doing it in a pronounced fashion. I usually hone pretty subtly. And these strokes have been going pretty quickly. All right, so there's that. All right, so, well, at least the paper towel is still here. Um, it's been one of those days where everything I put down seems to fall on the floor and roll under a table. No kidding. Um, the top of my pepper mill, little tiny like acorn nut popped out of my hand in the kitchen, rolled across the floor and went in a crack between like the cabinet molding and the dishwasher. It, it was like, I, if I tried to do that in a hundred thousand years, it would never have happened. Uh, of course it was like I'm in the middle of cooking too, so it really pissed me off. Anyway. Um, Suffice to say, I'm just pleased that the paper towel didn't, like, do a freaking swan dive into the back over there. Anyway, okay, so I'm good there. This is Tomo. You know, and in real life, I'm not talking, and I'm going even faster than this. And because I did that killer job on coma, and that's a killer coma, killer coma, sounds like a restaurant. Anyway. Yeah, I know, I'm in a mood, it's the heat. It's like, I don't know, 90-something freaking degrees out now for like two weeks. My brains are fried. Okay, so, uh, Tomo. Yeah. This is just giving me a final polish up on top. Now, because I'm in the finishing stage, I came in with, you know, a hint of pressure. You know, um, there was some downward force, but like I'm not pushing on the blade, I'm not whatever, but and right now I'm lightening up. I think right now I'm at what you could feasibly call weight of the blade. Now remember, it's a big heavy grind. It's a little bit different when you have a five eighths uh, singer or something, okay? Got to adjust, right? You still got to get the polishing stuff, the abrasive in it to do its job. So if I did have a really, really fine grind, like one of those TIs or whatever, I might actually be giving it a little bit more of a push down, but this thing is pretty chunky and gravity does its job. Anyway, so basically, you know, when somebody asks me how do I know when I'm done, <clears throat> when I'm done, when I'm done, I know when I'm done, 
because I'm not sensing any more advancement. I'm not sensing a greater amount of smoothing out on the stone. I'm just getting to that point like right now So, um, yeah, I don't want to dress, but you can see, like, I pushed the slurry around a little bit, and uh, I have a nice polish going on, and it's creating some suction on the stone. I can feel a little bit of grab to the stone, not like, you know, People describe this feeling, I don't know, it depends on the blade, I guess, but I kind of think, yeah. See, my finger's over here. I'm not holding the, uh, you know, it looks like I'm doing a polo trick. I'm not, okay? The blade is stuck to the stone. You can see that, all right? All right, so at this point, <laughs> I would say we're done. And, um, you know, that's it. If I wasn't talking or whatever, however long this video is, you could probably take it down a half or uh, take two thirds off. You know, especially if you have everything lined up and you're focused and you're not screwing around. Um, my main reason for doing this is so that people don't think honing on JNATs like takes forever. It doesn't. Okay, it can take a really long time if you have a lot of work to do, but it's going to be a long time on anything. Yeah, synths will cut the time down because, well, you know, they're synthetics and uh, they're just like made for speed, you know. Uh, these guys are not made for speed. They're made for... Uh, enjoyment you know anyway so that's it typical honing as opposed to the full-blown progression so um have a good one